Today I am going to try to build a wood rack for all the scrap wood and the long pieces we have left. So we have these old tobacco hanging racks that we got years ago from when we were tobacco farming. We're going to modify it, cut it up and modify it into the base of my wood rack. So the first thing I do, cut the roller wheels off the bottom. these cross braces and this off, both ends, and use this for one side. I'm going to cut this one also and use this for the other side of the base. So I'm just going to finish cutting this up, just get it cut down to size. And I take the wheels off the other rack. Now that I have all the parts cut, I can go and put the rollers onto the angle iron. And I'm just going to do that by drilling some holes and putting in some bolts. There, start with a small hole. Nice and tight, make sure it's still square. Yep. I've been doing some work off camera. What I did, I put my racks together and I just put some bolts in, kept them all together. Cut some cross supports to support what's going to be the base or the floor. And uh, one for the center, two by twos, and I'm going to sandwich two by fours in between, and two by four on each end. And then I cut an OSB because that's what I have to fit on the bottom. Sit tight, nice snug fit in there. So what my plan is, so my center mark, so I take two by four straight up here with an angle on one side and do the same thing on either end. So I'm going to have three, three pieces that are the same with an angle on one end and straight on the other side. I've already cut a template. No particular angle, I just put it so that it had a decent angle for the long sheets of plywood to lean against so they don't tip out. And then on the other side is just a straight piece. That is my angle. Cut this off and then attach this piece to this piece. There, I just cut my angle. That's my template right there. Get that lined up down there. Over there. Set this in. Down there, and there. Now to make two more of these, 
and fasten them together. Oh, I <laughs> need a drill bit. I realized I needed to cut a dado into the bottom support to be able to attach the upright 2x4s to. the centerpiece I just cut a hole measured the distance I needed back and front and then take my centerpiece and that's just going to slide in this hole from underneath two two by twos one on either side I'm going to screw in support this and hold it in place so I just set up some boards underneath to support this while I put it in. of one by four that I've cut to length. It's really got a huge bow in it, so it'll be perfect for this job. Set a clamp up at the height I need. I think I'm gonna go. Metal support. It's got to be, it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be for this. It's just a wood rack. Maybe someday I'll build a better one. I don't know. I doubt it. This one works. So now for the box that's going to hold all the small scraps. I just put in some 2x2 two two support brackets. And then one on this side. And one on this side. And my front wall is here. I've got one on that side and one on that side as well. Now I'm just going to put this up here. And... Uh, yeah, trying to do this by myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know what I have to do. Take these off, attach them to this board instead. That'd be easier. Okay. Move my boards there. This should make things a little bit easier. I think. Oh, yeah. All I need to do, cut my end pieces, put my end pieces on both ends, 
Put a couple of dividers in. Done. Nothing pretty. Like I always say, it's not pretty, but it works. So, yeah. We do a little spin around. strip of OSB across the bottom. Back around. And inside, I just put a couple pieces of 2 by 4 just as dividers so all your stuff doesn't fall over. Put it in there. Now I get to fill it up. Oh wait, no. First I have to clean up the mess. There it is. All loaded up with all kinds of stuff. Plywood, two by twos. Some two by fours, some other lumber. Yeah. Hopefully, one of these days, it's not gonna have any OSB on it, but but it's movable. It's heavy. But yeah, I mean. It'll serve our purposes. day everyone. I am going to make an attempt at making some fabric roller blinds or a roller shade for my front kitchen window. In the in the evening the sun just blares in through here and while we're sitting at the kitchen table it's pretty much blinding when you're looking in that direction. So we've got blinds on the big picture window and we've got blinds on the on the on the walk-in door and now I just need to make some blinds for the small kitchen window. So what I've started with is just a piece of really nice kind of uh, a neutral color. The fabric is pretty soft. It's been washed and uh, I just cut a piece of fabric uh, an inch wider than my window and four inches taller than my window. I have a small piece of dowel and a probably it's like a one by three quarter inch piece of leftover cedar that we had. So this is going to be the structural part of my blind and this will be the fabric part of my blind. And got my coffee. I just need to uh, put a hem in the edges, half inch on either side, and as well as the bottom and the top. So I'll go do that. So I've got all my hems done all the way around. I want to take my bottom dowel and just attach it to the bottom of the curtain. And make sure I got the right sides the way I want them. And I think I'm just going to do it with a hot glue gun and then drop in a couple staples just to make sure it stays.
give it a little, a little test. I'm just dropping a couple staples. I'm just going to finish gluing, re-glue, and glue the fabric together here. Okay, I'm going to staple this onto this edge. So now for this part, this is the top. I need to wrap the fabric all the way around so that you can't see the exposed board. So it's just more hot glue for that. All the way across, work fast. Glue. Glue. Now I need to attach my little hooks, or little, they're not rings, they're little, little eyelet thingies. And I need one on the front of each side and one on the back of each side to, to attach the string to. So then just two small hooks in the front. Oh, it says it's 15 out. Elmer's only eight. Sweet. Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Sorry, people from Elmer. Sudbury 16. String hooks attached. And then you need your cord, which needs to be three times longer on one side, three and a half times longer on the other side. Look at you looking all experty. Who? You, three times more longer on one side, three and a half I'm times on the other. I'm just following instructions. You attach eye, eyes on the front and attach one of your cords, one of each of your cords to that. I run it all the way down around the bottom up to the second eye that you put up here. One cord runs across to the third eye over here, while the other cord that's attached to this front one <coughs> runs down, around, and up. So now, as you pull your cords, your blind rolls up. Let them go. Blind goes down. Now we got to install it. It's been a couple days since I actually built these things and now I'm finally putting them up. But uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go something like this with the help of my handy husband. Up to you. Put the cords back up. This one. I'm so confused that I gotta go to the other side. It's a tangled mess, is what it is. Well, you're not gonna put it all the way down anyway, are you? I don't know. Something like that. I think when you pull it up, you just have to pull it straight down. There. You're going to wrap to Blind. the sink? Is that how you're going to leave it? Yep. I'm just going to attach it to the sink when we don't... Hacker! Have... <laughs>